My name is Dan Clement. I'm president of the Great Dane Graphics, vice president of art and creative process for Group Stall, like Andy had mentioned. Um, and we create artwork for the decorating industry, right? So let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's jump right into it here. All right. So I'm going to spend just one minute here telling you that this is our website, greatdangraphics.com. The artwork that we're going to create today, I'm going to actually use uh, two of our stock designs. But all the techniques and the way I build it, you can use uh, for any artwork that you might want to create yourself. Uh, so if you come to our website and here's our homepage, obviously we have some we have training books, we have training videos, uh, that sort of thing. So stock art, collection packs, training books, videos. Um, just to show you, if you come over here and you go to browse art, right? Uh, and let's just hit a stock art button here. And we'll see a whole bunch of designs, right? It just scrolls and scrolls forever. You can obviously search for whatever you're looking for. You can search by um, decorating method too. So without further ado, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's go find my Photoshop here. So we're gonna do a Merry Christmas design because Halloween's here already, right? So uh, a couple of things to look at. If you notice, you can see that this uh, this design sort of fades away at the top and the bottom. It's got a lot of soft edges here on the on the outside edge. Um, anytime you see these gray and white checkers, that it that means it's transparent, right? So it's, the artwork is on a transparent layer. Uh, we're going to use that design and this design, but the only thing we're going to do out of here is we're just going to steal this little ornament. So we're going to take that Christmas ornament and we're going to put it inside of this guy here. Uh, and we're going to work with it, right? So I will be using a Cintiq, which is what I'm looking at right now. And what that is, is a Wacom product that has a cordless pen. So I will be using my brick, right? I use a mouse all the time. I go back and forth all the time. So you don't, if you don't have one of these, it's not necessary. Um, but you can get yourself a small Wacom tablet. Uh, it's the same concept. It's a pen versus a brick. Uh, and you'd have it on your desk and your hand would be down here, but you'll be looking at your screen this way. Um, takes just a little bit getting used to, it's very cheap. This is this is $60 US here at, uh, at, at a Best Buy or something. So it's not very expensive at all. This on the other hand, Cintiq is much more expensive, but you don't need to have it, right? So, all right, so just to show you, this is transparent background, so is this one. Uh, but if you're gonna create your artwork, and this is something that I'm gonna do now, right? We're gonna go to File Menu, New, and we're just going to use those two as jumping off points. So on our side, uh, the largest we can print on our ultra color uh, in the States is 11 and a half by actually 18 in, in, uh, inches, right? So when we create our artwork, we always have our vertical a little bit higher so we can allow for the image and text or whatever. Um, but it would leave the width for the shirt kind of how wherever it lands, right? So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I guess I can go to centimeters like you guys would have over there. Um, now, right here, the rest of this information is very, very important because you have to answer these things correctly or put in the right info in order to do a good job on your print. So your resolution should always be 300 pixels per inch. That is a high resolution file. Your color mode, I create my artwork in RGB always. E even though we're printing to a CMYK printer, uh, when you s supply a, a an RGB PNG file to that, it's can, the rip or the print driver is going to interpolate those colors and do the math and crunch it down and print accurately, right? So RGB and right here, one of the most important things is in your background contents, uh, Photoshop defaults to white. You want to make sure you have it as transparent. Uh, and right here, I always use Adobe RGB 1998 as my color profile. Um, you can use whatever one you want, but I like the rich blacks and the vibrant colors it gives us. So I'm going to hit the create button and there it is, right? So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and my, pull out my panel, my uh, artwork panel here, and I'm going to come to my layers and I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to drag it right in to this image, this document. And if you can see it, it's kind of cut, it cuts off because when we create our artwork at Great Dane Graphics, we do 13 inches, uh, 14 inches by 14 inches. So it's, it's much larger than it needs to be. So I'm just going to go to edit, transform, and come to free transform. And I'm going to hold my option or the alt key just to center it in the center of the page. And I'm going to kind of shrink it like this. And I'll just set it. All right. So now what I want to do is we're going to have a background element in here. So um, let me see real quick. I'm going to show you what the finished design is if I can. 
so you guys can get an idea of what we're going to create. All right. So we're going to create this design with the snowflake background stuff, and we're going to add different color uh, ornaments um, to it. So that's what we're shooting for, just so, um, so you know. All right. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon there, and I'm going to look for a shape. We're going to find that snowflake. Now, that snowflake, if you open up your shapes in Photoshop, right, you're going to have to go get this legacy thing by hitting this little fly out menu and legacy shapes and more, right? Because I have a new version installed this uh, 2021. And it's in this uh, legacy uh, shapes and more. I'm going to click on that. Then all legacy default shapes. I don't know why they take them out. If they're in there, they should just leave them in there. But if you go to nature here, right, and you just scroll around, you'll see the the snowflake that I use. So I'm just going to click it out, hold my shift key to constrain the proportions there. Uh, we'll try to make it as large as we can. I'll tuck this away now. So I'm going to go to the outside corner. And I'm going to rotate it because this is the tallest way, right? The, I, vertically, that image is uh, is taller than it is wide by just a little bit, but I want to get it pretty big as a background element in here. So now I'll just kind of Center it there and set it. All right. I'm going to turn off my artwork for now because I'm not ready to use it. I'm going to create a new layer on top. And if I hold my command key and click on this icon here, it's going to select that snowflake. Right. But now I want to go ahead and fill this new layer with white. So if I hit my D key, that makes my foreground color black and white. If I hit my X key on my keyboard, it makes it exchanges those. So it makes my white as my foreground. So on my new layer with those uh, marching ants here, if I hit Option Delete or Alt Backspace on your PC, um, you can see we just filled that selected area with a color. So it's got marching ants there. So I'm going to kind of make those outlines. If I go to Select Menu, we'll come down to Modify, and I'm going to contract it. And I'm going to contract it by 18 pixels works. I hit OK. So you see that there? Now watch this. I'm just going to delete it, right? So let me do this uh, in a minute here. All right. So... I deleted it, so which means I'm going to make an outline, and then I'm going to shrink it in, and I'm going to fill it again. So I'm going to go back to Select Menu. I'm going to modify it and contract it once more. We'll do, say, 24 pixels and hit OK, and you can see it's just kind of going in. I'm going to fill it with white, right, like that. Now let's do this. I'm going to come in and put a white a uh, color background underneath all of it so we know we can see this white stuff because it's hard to see it as it is here. So there we go. So now we have um, our snowflake layer, okay? So now what I wanna do is I wanna select this inside because I'm gonna do it again and I wanna make a blue, but we're gonna pull the blue from that Christmas design. So uh, if I grab my magic wand tool here, right? And come over here and click. Now see what happens? It clicked, it selected all of the white there, right? Well, because my contiguous thing is unchecked. So I'm gonna deselect that and click on contiguous. Now it's just gonna, when I do it, it's only going to select the stuff that's connected or touching. So now if we go to select menu last time here, modify, contract, and let's do another 18. Hit OK. And let's do this. We go to window, right? We'll pull up. Uh, we'll just go here, I guess. Nope. Let's go back here. We have them in here. So let's just do this. Grab my eyedropper tool and click on a blue that I don't want to make the background, right? I'm going to go to my artwork layer here that's selected, uh, my snowflake. My light blue is the color I'm looking for. I'm just going to option delete or alt backspace again. And then now our snowflake is kind of where we want it um, uh, to go with. Actually, I missed a step. It looks like I, I rotated it before and added a new one, but we'll just go with this one. This will work. All right. So with my artwork, I just moved it to the top. We'll shrink it. So if I go to edit menu, free transform, right? And we go a little bit smaller. Um, I'm just going to kind of do like this. And I'm trying to break the borders right here and up here only where um, the solid stuff is. So if you notice, there's a lot of fades up above, right? We're not going to, we can't print that. So we're going to have to remove it, but everything else inside that shape is going to work for us. So You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second because we're going to take that stuff off. All right. So that looks pretty good. It kind of fits into the size that we're looking for. So now if I hold my command key again and click on my shape, right, and my artwork layer, I'm going to duplicate it. 
just so we have an extra one. Cause I like to keep an extra in case I mess up something <laughs> happens a lot. Already messed up on what I did last time on this design. So uh, it's going to be a little bit different than the one that Andy's going to show you. Uh, so it still works though. Uh, all right. So now go back to my artwork. When I say we can't use this stuff, I'm going to grab my pen as a moment, hit my E key for my eraser tool and watch what, watch what I'm going to do. We're going to select my artwork layer here, right? And what am I doing here? Why is it not working? Let me sell it. Let me see. Zero. All right. So, cause my white selected. So what I need to do is inverse this selection now. Yeah, there we go. So I just inverse the selection because what I want to do is get rid of all the stuff in the background and inside uh, the white here. Watch. See this? Because I, I like it to have to be clean uh, in here, right, inside the shape. So I, I like the artwork to be, the blue stuff to be inside the outline of the white. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, and got to remove all this stuff. So you see here, we have this soft stuff. So you're just going to kind of come and erase it really quick. Do the same thing here. Uh, you might want to spend, you know, a few minutes more time-wise on yours if you uh, do something similar, right? But something like that. And you can see using this pen, this type of pen um, really lets you do this pretty quick. So I'm just kind of scrolling around my image and I'm going to erase uh, wherever I see that taking place, like up in here, right? So we're going to do this all the way around to right next to this tree and kind of do that. And on this one, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so I get a little bit more detail to follow around this tree itself. Okay, it's getting there. This is the only, this is the most tedious part of it. You don't wanna ruin your artwork but it doesn't really matter if you go into it a little bit because you'll never see it as long as it's solid is the pro is the idea. Now here's, here's something interesting, right? So this hat broke uh, free of this, um, the shape, right? So on the outside there, as you zoom in and out kind of, so you can see, we're going to keep that ball because it's going to have a hard edge, right? The only reason we can't keep it now is because it has all the soft edges uh, kind of all up in this area, right? So if I do it like this and just sort of paint right around it, we'll, we'll, we'll have that. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in just a minute. So just kind of erase here. Left bracket key, by the way, reduces the size of my brush in Photoshop or just about every application that you can paint with. Uh, Affinity Photo, if you are an Affinity Photo guy, that kind of thing. Um, so just you just kind of scrolling around and cleaning up the art. This is this is the part that takes just a little bit, a little bit of time. And you can see it's uh, not hard, but we're on a time crunch here. So left bracket makes your brush smaller, right bracket makes it larger. All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use my uh, quick selection tool. I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger. I'm just going to try to grab this ornament, right? And with the way the quick selection tool works is you click and drag and it selects, it looks for a change in color, like a transitional area. And it, it does, uh, it works on that. So in order to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to hit my L key for my lasso tool. And if I hold my option key or something uh, or the uh, alt key, I can deselect from my selection like this, right? And just kind of clean this up. And I'm not, too worried about it because it's going to be such a small piece to this design, these little bitty details anyway. The ornaments will be very big as far as part of a design element, but the, uh, there we go. So that looks pretty good, right? So here's a cool design. You could put, you know, Merry Christmas on this and you're done. Uh, but just to show you, we can make it even cooler. We get to play around with things, which I love. So Command T or control T on a PC will give you your free transform. That's how I got to this or it's, it's edit and come down to free transform. That's how you can grab things and resize things. All right. So I'm going to turn off these other um, eyeballs here for a second uh, because I'll just show you what we want to do is we want to make this stuff here in the middle white, right? So grab my lasso tool and I'm going to 
just grab the ball part of it because I do want this top piece, the metal piece to stay that way in all of the colors that we're about to create here. So we just isolate the ball piece of it. And right here, I'm going to go to my reds because there's a little bit of red in here and we're just going to make it lightness all the way to white. I'm going to go to my yellows and we're going to do the same thing. And then now I'm going to go to greens, right? We're going to move some of this green in here like that. Okay. So I'm going to hit OK to that. Now, next thing I need to do is select the white areas because I want them a little bit more white. And um, I'll deselect this, grab my uh, magic wand tool here, and I'm going to click on it, right? And this says contiguous is checked on. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on for now because it gets just a little extra wonky. If we don't, it'll start grabbing more colors than we want. So uh, that's pretty good. One more spot here, right? Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is grab my L key, hit my L key, gives me my lasso tool, right? And I can hold my option key, the Alt key, and deselect this little piece here in my highlight. And, uh, you know, maybe right there. But that looks pretty good. So if I command, if I just go to...